This week's cause of death, Winnie the Pooh! up you guys it's Julie the Bibliophile here and I'm here for another episode talk to talk about episode 302 and the fangs of death I've got some tea with me because first of all because it's freezing in my room second of all because like like I'm at a loss for words right now if you see so much happened in that episode, and I take back right now everything I said last week about maybe this season not being as good and me being scared. Hell no, okay? This episode was amazing. So before I get into exact details of the episode, some general statements right now. Um, some things that Dean had said were going to happen to this season that I am now starting to notice are definitely A, the show getting darker, like, <laughs> hello, but also it comforts me when he said it's like a subtle darkness, like a Doctor Who kind of darkness. I get what he means now watching that episode, because the other thing that I definitely saw in this episode was how it is relating to Doctor Who. Like, definitely, without a doubt, this show is very Doctor Who-like at the moment. That was a very Doctor Who-like episode. To get into the episode, I just, I don't even know where to begin. I, I'm just having so many emotions right now, and so many thoughts. In general, I loved the episode, like, like I said. Um, one thing that I thought, that I had been thinking after last week was that, um, the thing that I liked best about the librarians was their character and how well they wrote character arcs and character development and the depth in characters' relationships and I was afraid that we weren't really going to see that in season 3 because that is usually very present in the premieres and we didn't really see any character in the season 3 premiere, it was all action. But this episode I got to see how they are adding more action and keeping the show very action based while still keeping that strength of the character writing and balancing them out very well. And I really, really like what a job Dean Devlin is doing after seeing this episode. So I'm gonna start because the episode started very lighthearted. Like, I was really happy when this episode started. I was like, okay, sure, this is gonna be great. They're going to find Charlene. Immediately we have our first sex joke of the season, Charlene making the noises, and I'm like, all right, I was expecting this. We all saw the previews. And then, you know, they find Charlene. I assume you don't mind sharing a bed. Nope, we don't. Next thing you know, Eve's in a bed sheet. Like, okay, fine. It was lighthearted. They're talking about going on vacation together, which, hello, oh my god. Like, happy Evelyn, finally happy. And then he's like, oh, you know, the sun isn't fully up yet. Let's go back to bed. Like, all right, okay, fun. Just what I expect from the librarians. Then when they go on the freaking case, because Charlene gets kidnapped, Charlene's gone, Flynn is using the back door to um, try to find people, Ezekiel's arguing with him. Here we had a nice moment, I really loved how um, when Jenkins was talking about like you need something that um, the person cares about deeply and love and Ezekiel looks at his pizza. <laughs> okay, so that was, you know, when the episode was still funny before we got into hell. We went to this, this, um, super collider thing place, um, then they all go through the door, Jenkins can't stop Flynn, and they all go after Flynn, and then Eve and Jenkins get left behind. So they go out. So now we've got two things going on. We've got the whole, um, um, Flynn and Jake and Cassandra and Ezekiel in the super collider factory, and we've got Jenkins and Eve trying to get to them. Now, it's really hard for me to talk about this episode because I forgot over the hiatus how fast these episodes move and how if you, you lose everything, you don't get everything from this episode until you watch it five times. Like, you know, my last episode reviews, there were always big moments to focus on, which I do want to talk about and I can find the big moments to focus on, but all of a sudden my brain is remembering there was all this stuff in between and it was just great. They get there, there's these people there, they find out there's werewolves, we see Tom and this lady kiss, and I'm like, okay, well they said they're getting darker, they said there's gonna be deaths, uh, one of them is going, and then Tom leaves, and I'm like, well guess who it's gonna be? Flynn and Ezekiel go out after them, 
go out with them. I don't remember to do what. Again, details. Fuzzy. Um, and then we leave Stone and Cassandra in the room together with these other two. Tom dies. Okay, so one thing I want to talk about, because... Mm -hmm, that got my heart racing was when they realized they couldn't get through with the walkie-talkie to talk to Flynn and Ezekiel about what had just happened, and Jake's like, I can go talk to them, and the look that he and Cassandra gave each other! I, I'm destroyed. I'm, I'm, I'm destroyed. That, that was just... They gave each other this look as if, like, communicating with each other through their eyes, which is not something that friends do, okay? That's not a platonic thing to do. And, like, they're looking at each other, like, communicating through the eyes. Cassandra's like, don't go. And he's, like, telling her, I have to go. And I know you don't want me to go, but I gotta go. And I'm sorry. And you can read all of that in their eyes, which really proves to me, like, what amazing actors Christian and Lindy are. Because I don't even think, I don't, definitely don't think I can do that. Like, that's amazing. I was able to tell what their whole conversation was through their eyes. And as an acting student, I'm like, how? Okay. Anyway, moving on past acting things. Cassandra had tears in her eyes. She had tears in her eyes because Jake was leaving to go be in danger, okay? Like, I'm sorry, but... Cassandra! The other moment that I really liked, because if we're talking about character strength, one thing I did mention was that how this episode, it really came through, how the characters are strong, because Ezekiel gets bitten by the werewolf, Finally, after like 10 minutes, somebody realizes that he's bleeding. Thank you, Jake. And I really, here we got to see like the big brother relationship between Jake and Ezekiel, where Jake was, you know, caring for him, making sure he was okay. And we really got to see Jake as like an emotional rock and a mentor when he was talking to Flynn about how it was all going to be okay because Flynn thought Charlene was dead. That's a thing I forgot to mention. Kind of an important thing. Um... And I really liked to see the side of Jake because we've seen him do it with Cassie and we really see how he can do it with anybody. And that is such a strong part of Jake's character that I love that we're getting to explore more. How Jake is able to calm people down and talk them through things and be that kind of emotional rock when he himself is so emotionally unstable but he's able to be that for other people. And that's like such a great character choice to me and I find it really interesting and I love it. And the writing here is just so strong. Again, such strong writing. The Librarians has always had very strong character writing and that definitely continued in the episode today. So then Ezekiel said he's gonna leave and distract the werewolves so that they can shut off the self-destruct. Um, and we got to see this moment between Flynn and Ezekiel that like destroyed me. Um, where, like, um, we always see Flynn and Ezekiel saying they don't like each other, right? That's repeated in every finale, but I think we all know at this point from reading it that it's more of, like, a love-hate thing, where they do care about each other, but, like, they don't like each other, kind of on, like, a stone and Ezekiel sense, but more extreme. And so then, you know, we have Flynn not wanting him to go and, like, Ezekiel, like, saying, like, no, I'm gonna be, I have to do this. Ezekiel growing up and taking responsibility and, like, throwing himself on the front line. We really see Ezekiel growing in this episode, too. And Flynn and Ezekiel, their relationship growing, Flynn growing and caring about the librarians, as we saw in And the Happily Ever Afters last season. We get to see an extension of that because he's been staying now and working with them. And then, of course, Ezekiel throws throws in this little quip at the end, like, well, at least I'll die happy then knowing you were wrong about something. And it was just so sweet. And there was so much behind his voice. Again, the acting, the everything, the, just the writing, the acting, the everything made this so spectacular. Another thing that I want to mention while I'm going on here about how amazing the character relationships were, because as I said, that's the thing I like best in any show. One thing that I found amazing was this episode was so intense. Like, I was on the edge of my seat the whole time, like, not breathing, just watching the screen. And that's not something that happens a lot, like, all that often for me anymore as I've gotten older and I missed it. And, like, wow, like, what an intense episode. So aside from the character stuff, the action was great, too. I'm gonna take a sip of tea now, excuse me. <laughs> so meanwhile, while all of this going on is going on, we've had this whole thing going on with Eve and Jenkins, um, looking for them. And they meet Apep, who is possessing this guard lady, 
And then, you know, Jenkins pulls up Voldemort, Harry, let's finish this the way we started it. Together, throwing them off the cliff so that Eve lands on Jenkins. He doesn't get killed by the fall because he's immortal. And then Eve is fine because, you know, she he broke her fall. And I thought that was really creative. I really liked that, like, finding a way to use immortal characters. Speaking of immortal characters, the one line that I found really, really interesting was Flynn saying that, um... Charlene, when he thought she was possessed, he said the only way you can kill an immortal is from the inside. And, like, I feel like that's gonna be important. We know we have that major character death coming up. I'm thinking it's gonna be Charlene or Jenkins. And so, the only way you can kill an immortal is from the inside. That is a pretty interesting tidbit of information that seems important. Even if we weren't expecting a major character death, that just, like... Cool information to know about this Librarian's universe, right? And we have this thing, they're trying to shut off the thing, and there's a thing going on, and they're running out of time to suck Apep into the Super Collider, and um, Apep gets there, Flynn's fighting her off, they're running out of time, I'm like not breathing, and Fl and then Flynn's like, if you want to kill a librarian, there's one thing you forgot about when, you have to, when you're killing a librarian. His guardian. And Eve comes jumping in because Flynn apparently saw Eve behind Apep, which was so cool. I love that. That's like one of my favorite tropes when someone's about to die and then surprise, someone else returns and bam, 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 and saves them. And like, so we had this with Flynn and Eve here. She pushes them out of the way. They're, they're buff. They're gone. It's fine. Then we get back to the library. <laughs> You know, whenever this show destroys my heart, it's always either in the first or the last scene. Or both. And this episode went for both, apparently. So thanks for that. We have Flynn still thinking Charlene is dead. Eve trying to make sure he's okay. Ezekiel and Jake. And as the Ezekiel is cured of the werewolf thing. And Jake is playing fetch with him. And just like a cute little like snippet of humor, of goofiness. That, you know, again, that the show is still retaining its humor and goofiness. That thing that I loved while still keeping the action up and making it darker. Which is great. Cassie comes back saying she used magic. And that she was able to reconstruct the lost footage. And that Charlene is not dead. Not in the way I expected Charlene to not be dead. Because we knew from the previews that Charlene was in another episode. So that she wasn't dead. But I was expecting her to escape. Apparently she's not dead because, like, you know, it wasn't Charlene in the first place, which that's, you know, not what I expected. <laughs> like, it seems like the easiest way out, but because it's the easiest way out, it's never what you expect because, like, no sh other show ever takes the easy way out, which is what I really find interesting about the librarians. Like, they always take what you should expect and don't, but don't expect and make that, like, the actual conclusion so that you don't expect it. And... We see Eve come into the annex a little bit later, and Jenkins says Flynn is gone. Which I honestly wasn't expecting because I was so focused on this episode that I completely forgot about the fact that Noah wasn't in the next episode. And so when Jenkins said Flynn is gone, it actually surprised me. I'm like, oh yeah, right. But this time, he left Eve a letter! And I knew I was gonna die as soon as I saw that envelope. I knew death was imminent. But I didn't know the extent that that was gonna go. Oh my god. I call foul play, okay? You just- you can't just pull a Winnie the Pooh quote on me, happening to be one of my favorite Disney quotes, one of the ones that always makes me cry, and use it with even Flynn! Dean Devlin, I call foul play. You can't just pull a Winnie the Pooh quote, especially not that one! How lucky I am to have someone that makes saying goodbye so hard. And he's explaining to eat this letter is basically just a whopping page of character development for Flynn. We're really getting to see where Flynn's character is going this season, and I love it! <sighs> it's really, I'm gonna talk about this in a bit later, so let's just go on with the letter. He says, like, um... Um, people almost died today because of me. We almost lost Ezekiel because of me. I have to go find Charlene. And when I get back, I promise we're gonna take that vacation. Okay. Alright. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, like, fan it off. Fan off. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm doing okay. I'm doing fine. They're, they're gonna go on a vacation, and I'm fine about it. I'm not, mm-hmm. So the really interesting insight that this letter provides to me is that I was worried that they were going to erase Ka Flynn's character development from last season or really not acknowledge it. 
because at the end of season two, obviously, we see that Flynn is ready to start growing. He's ready to stay at the library, stay with Eve, get to know the Lits, work with the Lits after this whole season, maybe, like, close to, like, six months, fighting with his girlfriend. He's ready to, like, you know step up but Flynn has been running away and leaving his whole life and he's been alone his whole life too so clearly that's not going to be an easy thing and what we get to see in this letter is how how Flynn is changing and how this is going to be a process for him which I think is like so good such strong character writing and oh um so like as this this is going to be a process for Flynn and we see that that he's leaving again so clearly he's not a hundred percent like, you know, developed, but he's not leaving because he had one fight with Eve and then I need to go be on my own and get away from you. I need to be alone. No, the reason he's leaving is because he's afraid that if he stays, he's going to hurt the librarians and hurt Eve, which is just, wow, such a whole new layer to his character of being afraid of hurting people because he hurt people in the past with his actions and now... He's afraid of hurting them again, but yet he hurt people by leaving, and now he's leaving again. Which is just, I can't even put into words how, like, deep and amazing this character arc is. I'll probably figure it out in the coming days and then write a post on Tumblr or something. It's just so amazing to see this, this arc for Flynn, and it's gonna be really interesting to see this character development that kind of just got thrown on us without re being really drawn out so much in Season 2. And then see it develop in season three now that we have Noah Wiley for more and we can do more with him. I'm sorry, I'm still focused on the, the Winnie the Pooh thing. Like, not only did they use the quote, being Flynn, Flynn being Flynn mentioned that it was Winnie the Pooh. Who, like, said that, that's like, that's paraphrasing Winnie the Pooh, and then Eve rolls her eyes, and then she chuckled, like, explaining what I love about their relationship so much. How lucky am I to have someone who makes saying goodbye so hard? Instead of something, normally the quote is something. Um, I've used it when talking about what it feels like to graduate high school, but how lucky am I to have someone who makes saying goodbye so hard? Even Flynn, ladies and gentlemen. You know, before this episode started, just today, I was listening to Christmas music and saying, Wow! Last season, when I was listening to Christmas music in relation to Even Flynn, I had to listen to all the sad Christmas songs, like Blue Christmas and the Vince Vance and the Valiance version of All I Want for Christmas is You and um, I'll Be Home for Christmas. But this season, whoop de doo I don't have to do that. I can just listen to Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is You and it'll be great. Well, guess what? I'm gonna listen to Blue Christmas now and like I'll be home for Christmas and all of those that happen to be really amazing songs even though they're really sad and it's Christmas next week next week is the big Cassandra episode you guys I'm so excited I'm so 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 excited I will see you next week I'll probably be in tears because something big may have happened for Cassandra and if not they're gonna have been alone together at a hotel for a whole freaking episode so I'm gonna stop talking now because I'm already at 20 minutes here what the hell um if you like this video please remember to like and subscribe I post videos every week talking about the librarians you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, all links are in the description. I will see you later, my lits, and go get some tea and, and recover from that episode, man. Like me, bye.